welcome Quit playing to... air guitar. Hey, <laughs> you caught him. <laughs> yes, welcome to Press Row, joined as always by Aaron Matthews, Todd Walker, Mark Kuntz. I'm Matt Finkel, and Todd's air guitar is here as well. We're here to talk local sports, and we'll start off with a little high school football. It's week five already. I can't believe it. I don't know where the time has gone. But this week, looking at the schedule, there doesn't seem to be any marquee matchups. Is this a trap week? And what are your best games available that, that are gonna, we're going to be out at Friday nights? You know, it, you're right. There really isn't one that jumps out at you. So uh, it, it is a week where you, you figure the contenders are going to win. So if that's how you define a trap, then I guess it is. Uh, but, you know, I still think there are interesting games to be played. You know, I, our game on WIMA is going to be Lima Senior and St. Francis. Uh, Spartans go to Toledo. They're playing that game at the Glass Bowl. And I don't know if you guys recall the St. Francis Lima Senior game last year. Yeah. It was a basketball game on grass with the scoring. So I think the Spartans have a bit of a chip on their shoulder to, to try and corral Lamar Carswell and the Knights a little better than they did last year and, uh, and keep their winning ways in the track. So I think that's an interesting game. I think, you, I think we have two games in our area, and I'll have the call of one of them. Uh, with LCC and Delphus Jefferson. Yeah. Birds come off a very convincing 38-17 win at Columbus Grove this past Friday. And Jefferson comes in at 4-0. Uh, They're scoring at 44 points a game, only giving up 10 points a game. That comes to 176 to 41 as far as those averages. But also in the Northwest Conference, I think with Spencerville and Columbus Grove, uh, you look at Grove and you see how did they respond. They've been dealt that first loss. Two years ago, when they played LCC and lost in week four, how did they respond? Wasn't all that well. Spencerville got them pretty good. Bearcats playing excellent football. They're already up around the 200 point mark through four games as well. And I think that game could be a statement game for Spencerville. Could also be a statement game for Columbus Grove if they can contain the offensive attack of the Bearcats. I think in the Western Buckeye League, I, there might be a marquee game in the WBL with Wapakoneta mm -hmm. yes. taking on Salina, traveling down to Mercer County, or basically across the county line of Mercer County. You remember last year, that was a classic matchup where Wapak needed the late touchdown to get the victory. Salina does have one loss on the season. Wapakoneta is undefeated. Salina certainly would love to get a little revenge from last year and, and hand the Redskins their first loss of the season. But I, I think what we've seen out of the Western Buckeye League, Wapakoneta appears to be the best team in the league. OG is going to challenge them, but there's a few weeks before they play but uh, I don't know if there's a great game this weekend perhaps we'll have some teams that will turn out to be great games with the exception of Lima senior all that we mentioned are four and oh teams against three and one teams and there's two other games like that in the Mac as well which I found interesting St. Henry Coldwater and Marion against Anna and although we, we do expect the Cavs and Flyers to come Coldwater's out. Coldwater's at Anna and St. Henry takes on Marion Lowe. excuse me yeah that's right yep. St. Henry Coldwater played last week Either way, we do expect Cavs and Flyers to come out on top in those games, but those are two teams that could challenge them in the MAC, and those should be interesting as well. No doubt about it. So with that in mind, what's our biggest surprise of the season as we hit the halfway point? Uh, you, are we looking positive or negative here, guys? Either way. I think it's open-ended. If you, if you want to look at a half-empty glass, that is your right. <laughs> I'm going to look at a half-full glass and look at Mercer County and the Fort Recovery Indians. I don't think anybody thought the Indians were going to start off this season 3-1. and one. Looking at their remaining schedule, they, they've got some difficult games to come, but I think it's very realistic that Fort Recovery's got a winning record this year. Right now, they are in the race for the MAC title, and uh, hats off to what the, they've been able to do down there to Coach Neekamp and company. They're also the number one seed right now. Granted, it's early on the computer points that came out in uh, Region 26, so they would be the number one seed. Marion Local would be the number two. Perhaps the most disappointing or negative surprise would be Ada. And after, I don't know, maybe it's because we've been spoiled all these years of them making the playoffs and playing excellent football, you know, especially on the offensive end, how, where they're at right now with a one and three record and it hasn't been pretty and they may basically have to play perfect football from here on out to make the playoffs. And I think it's a little bit of a surprise based on what they did a year ago in the first year of Bob Olin and the transition that they made from the Mike Fell style offense to the Bob Olin style and how things were a little bit different. But they granted, you know, you yes, they've lost their quarterback, but still with this off, this offense and these type of players, it's been plug and play, plug in a guy and go. And we saw that even with an injury a few years ago with Mitchell Fain, they plugged Heath Jackson in and he did an outstanding job at quarterback back in 2009. But uh, 
I would say Fort Recovery, definitely the positive, and then to the negative, unfortunately, would be Ada. And Ada travels to Bluffton this week. You talk yeah. about Ada and Bluffton, those are two teams desperate to get a win. Big time. Yeah. Big time. You know, I, still, to me, the, the biggest surprise is not that Lima Senior is winning, but they How? are mashing people. Yeah. They're and playing Lufton, defense. That's and the, the thing. And they're stopping people. Yeah. You know, the transformation we saw from 2012 to 13 was a huge surprise. And I'm, I'm more surprised this year because they have found a way to get good defensively and well, it didn't take that long. Last year, they were able to sneak up on people. They can't do that this year, and yet they're still mashing everybody. And look what they did last week to Fremont. Long touchdown pass, onside kick, long touchdown pass. Boom, it's 21-0. And then nothing. they stopped them, scored again. It's 21-27 nothing. Fremont doesn't even know what hit them. Mm -hmm. uh, the Spartans mean business. And to me, the way they've done it has been a surprise. And, and, we, and we've talked about it here for the first few weeks. I think Spencerville being 4-0, rolling like they are is a bit of a surprise. And you, let's go back to Lima Senior for a second, Todd. And the biggest thing, in my opinion, and Mike Fell has mentioned this, um, you know, to people within the Spartan community at the Spartan luncheons and the stuff like that, that they are playing a different style defensively. He thought they could come in and him and Frank Crea could use the defense that they used similar to what they had at Ada. They learned real fast that in order to compete at that Division One, Division Two level, that's not going to be the case. They retooled some things. And this is an absolutely explosive, quick team out on the football field and they go sideline to sideline as good as anybody in high school football in the Northwest District. I was looking at Delphus Jefferson team that you're going to see yes. LCC take on. There's They're 4-0 and, oh, and and Chris Summers has done a great job in his first year previously. The Is he still the athletic director? Yes. Okay, so wearing two hats now as well and they had well, to replace a handful of guys. Exactly. Yeah, that's it, the thing. Well, it wasn't just a handful of guys. Skill it was positions. The, the, the Northwest District back of the year, the Northwest District lineman of the year. Bizarre, yeah. yep. And, and Ross Thompson. They were Jetting off, yep. Yep. replacing key players on both sides of the ball. You're, you're right. Jefferson is certainly one of the bigger surprises. And a tough test this week against LCC. And right now Jefferson is ranked fifth in the poll with the computer points that our first look at that. So does that matter right now, or, or is this is this a good way, a good barometer for us, or is it way too early to even start thinking about that? It, it matters not. No. I, I guarantee you. I don't know. Like, it, it, um, it's it's fun right now to sit back there and go. Yeah, I'm like telling Aaron Jefferson can play Spencerville. Yeah. One yeah. week after they finish up on Saturday, they yes. play again in the playoffs. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You got Salina right and Walpaw could meet in Week One, according to the points right now. Yeah. It, it's interesting to look Lima at some Senior of the potential be matchups. Home. Yeah. Against Zini, I believe. Yes. Yeah, but why look at it? The, the points are so fluid. we got six weeks to go. It's a complete waste of time. I guarantee but, you Fort Recovery will not be number one in their region it, by no, the time it's over. They, no, they might they, not even make the playoffs. It, it's fun to look at for about four minutes right now at this point. After week four, four minutes. I'll be honest After with you. After week five, five minutes. I don't even look at them until, week, until eight weeks are done. When you got two games left, you can really look and say, okay, this is almost how it's going to be, and one or two games will swing it for these two teams. You can, by eight games in, it's almost already done, and barring huge upsets, you can really start to figure. Until then, you're wasting your time. This is putting the tablecloth on the table. We're not setting the table yet. Boy, we're well, stretching we, our metaphors today. <laughs> we got the tablecloth on the table. We, we, know, we know what place settings we need to use now because we've got the tablecloth and we want to match. So in that aspect, it does help us prepare to see what could be coming down the road. And to that I say, you got to eat. You got to eat. <laughs> but we're stretching the metaphors and similes all over the place today. Oh, boy. Uh, anything to make the math easier. On, like I, When you talk about a matchup and you say playoff points are involved, like that is just like so over my – I have no idea what that means. So at least I get to see some actual numbers on page <laughs> right now. Do and, not believe for a second that when coaches say they do not look at those. They've been looking for three weeks already. I, a, a certain former coach that I had a working relationship with for five years would hand me a piece of paper with a projected scale of everybody after week seven. Well, yeah. what, what's and the he was right. What's the playoff situation like in Tennessee? Not good for him. <laughs> <laughs> the playoff One in four with a bye week this week. It's non-existent as far as he's concerned. Uh, let's turn our attention to college football now. A lot of local guys having an impact on their team. So which – Non-quarterback, we'll leave out the quarterbacks in this, in this uh, case, is going to have the biggest impact on their team the rest of the way out. Wow. I, you know, I think we've already seen it with Quentin Poling. Yeah. And he was named the National Defensive Player of the Week. Uh, he's doing just like he did at Elida. He's 
running all over the place and tackling anything with the football in his hands, and he's picking balls off. It, it's a great story already for the Bobcats. Uh, I think, if, and if you eliminate the quarterbacks and you look at the impact he's already had, I don't know if there's really a good argument for somebody else. I could be forgetting. But I'll give you somebody else. All right. Eric Layfield for the Cincinnati Bearcats, starting okay. left tackle, That's a three year starter. He's got some legitimate NFL prospects ahead of him, but the reason why he could have a bigger impact than some of the other local guys. That is an offensive line for Cincinnati right now that is very much in flux. They've had some injury situations. They, they had to rotate some guys in against Miami. So if you can have an, an Eric Layfeld on your left tackle to really be a foundation to be the leader on that line, I think Eric Layfeld could be that guy. He protects Gunnar Keel's blind side, is what you're saying. Yeah, I think yeah, that that is a real good one because that's such an important position. And he's such a veteran on a team that has some aspirations, but as you mentioned, some issues. And, of course, he'll be playing the Buckeyes on Saturday, so he'll have his hands full. Now, Todd, you've got three guys, you know, with local ties, you know, Lima, Delphus, mm -hmm. Ada, and Heath Jackson, Chris Pullman, Taylor Royster from Bowling Green. And three those, guys playing. There's yeah. some other local yeah, guys are, on that Bowling Green right, team, too. But those three, you know, are seeing a lot of playing time. Pullman and Jackson starting on offense, Royster starting at nose on defense. Mm -hmm. And those three guys have brought a unique skill set to the Falcons as well, haven't they? Oh, those guys, they all make great contributions. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, when you look at the impact that polling has made, I think it's, yeah. uh, it's undeniable. Mm -hmm. It's polling and then the rest, then right. they, and then the rest of the but, You know, with, with the local guys at Bowling Green, uh, Heath Jackson is, is really a, a solid option offensively. And Taylor Royster really makes things happen on the D-line. He's a bit undersized. And, and Chris Pullman is just a football player. <laughs> you love seeing him out there, fullback and tight end. And, special teams or whatever yeah. needs to be done. Uh, all three of those guys are playing ES a lot. ESPN in particular give, gave Jackson some good love this yep. past weekend in the game up at Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. uh, talked about him being from Ada, and they even made mention how he's been in a no-huddle system ever since. <laughs> you know, he's been you know, basically sure. in junior high football. Also should mention Ethan Wolf returning from injury for Tennessee. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Caught eight passes in his first two games and uh, then missed the third due to injury. And uh, he's also the best blocking option they have, starting as a freshman. So look for him to make an impact with the Vols. So we're we got a couple punters too, if if we want to talk about Christian Cook for Miami yeah. out of Bluffton, and then Davidson out of Finley, who was yes. the the big yeah. or the the MAC special teams player of the week. Yeah, Joe punted well at Wisconsin. He yeah. got a workout, and uh, yeah. the thing that was impressive is they were, he was very consistent. He didn't have one that was 70 yards, and mm -hmm. then the next one he shanks it. He was. Very consistent, good hang time, and that was a well-deserved honor for Joe. Good job. Yeah, Cook had one of his punts inside the uh, the 10 in the game against yeah. Cincinnati. Now quickly, we'll finish up with uh, the NFL working our way up the ladder, high school, college. <laughs> now the NFL and uh, the AFC North. Are the Bengals the team to beat at 3-0? and Or this feels like a really tight division to me. And, and the Browns are sitting in last place at 1-2, and but all three of their games came down to a, a last-second field goal. So they could easily be 2-1, and one, or you know how that goes. So are the Bengals the team to beat? I think so. I think the Bengals are the team to beat in the division. Pittsburgh looked very good offensively Sunday night against Carolina. The biggest thing about the Steelers, though, guys, is all the problems that they've had health-wise on yeah. defense. They've lost three guys for the year. Ryan Shazier's out for the next couple of weeks. They coerced James Harrison out of retirement on Tuesday to sign with the team for a one-year deal. He knows the system. It's the same system that's been there in Pittsburgh as long as Dick LeBeau has been there. He'll have no problems getting acclimated and playing, and he's still in tremendous shape. That will help them, but I still think it's Cincinnati's division to, you know, to lose, so to speak. Yeah, I, I think there's no question the Bengals are the team to beat. They're already 3-0. and They've already beaten Baltimore, so uh, they've got the leg up, and you know, they've been in the playoffs the last three years, so. Yes, but when was the last time they won a playoff game? That is why people aren't buying the Cincinnati Bengals quite yet. That's they the haven't had the, the postseason success. Have as well. well, that's yeah. true, but. Uh, hey, the Indians at least have gotten into the World Series. The, well, the Bengals haven't won a playoff right, game right. since Boomer Esiason right. here, correct? Right, right, correct. right, right. But the Bengals off to a great start, though. 27 points a game is what they're averaging on offense, and they're only giving up 11. That's a good form formula to win. Yes, so, it is. Again, early in the season, but just taking a, taking a look at that AFC North for you. See where the Bengals and the Browns and the rest of our teams will end up. That's going to do it for this edition of Press Row. We'll see you next time on WOSN.